This is a HeadGum Podcast. Can you believe that 90 degrees now actually is something? Is that how you were going to start the show, too? I was too? like, we just cut each other off starting off the show, and I was going to say the same exact thing. <laughs> we originally lived on the East Coast, Pennsylvania, our whole lives. If you didn't know that, if you're new to this show, this is Coffee with Rachel. I'm, I'm Rachel. Yeah, I'm Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and it would get hot, man. It uh, would. Yeah, it and fluctuated. Cold. It was uh, in the negatives in the winter and uh, over the triple digits in the summer sometimes. Yeah, it would get to like, what, like one Sometimes it got fucking like, 10. Yeah. 1010. 1010. One, 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 one thousand. thousand. <laughs> But it would get really hot, and then it would get really cold, and it was just too unpredictable. And then we moved here, and it kind of mellowed out. Yeah. We live in Seattle now, if you didn't know. So See, Pacific Northwest, we're up there. Yeah, man. It's like, there's never a time where it's like 80 one day, 40 the next day, you know? It mm-hmm. never fluctuates that bad. And it's like a slow transition, yeah. which I appreciate because I need that kind of stability. My allergies, thank it. And also, either extreme or not real bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was 90 degrees yesterday. Today wasn't as high. It was yeah, like Yeah, it was really like the high 80s. But yesterday it felt really hot. But you know what? The reason why it's even worse now is because none of the places here have air conditioning. Yeah, that's why a lot of people in Seattle, like, start to complain when it gets to, like, high 80s and 90s because no buildings here are built with air conditioning. Like, last apartment, last summer, we had to get the portable air conditioner. Because the sun was literally pouring right into our apartment. Yeah, and it was just, like, face, I mean, it had great lighting, you know? Yeah. (laughs) It really did. Oh, my God, it did. The lighting's for selfies, honestly, unparalleled. The one thing I miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here, we don't get, like, the direct sunlight. It's still pretty sunny in here, but it doesn't get that hot, luckily. Thank you. And God. I think maybe just because the building's, like, made of concrete. That yeah, that's another help. factor. But It stays pretty cold in our apartment. However, you feel it at night when it'll you're be, trying to sleep. Yeah, it'll be interesting in the winter because we haven't been here in the winter Oof. really yet. And we were here in February. Which but, like, it was already starting to get a little bit warm by the time February started. Like, yeah, I remember moving day. I was literally wearing, like, a thin long sleeve shirt. Yeah, so. it was not really that bad. I'm looking to see, like, in, like, December and January what it's like in there. But it's going to be real fucking cold. Because I remember it was really hard to get used to how cold. Like, I in our last apartment would walk around with just a t-shirt and no pants, like majority of the time. Yeah, yeah, Because I'm just, it's very comfortable, you know? Here, I always have leggings on or some sort of pant just because I'm cold and Mm -hmm. I'm not used to feeling cold. It's wild. Yeah. I wouldn't trade it for being warm, though. Oh, no. Fuck that. But it's just wild to me because 90 degrees now is like, you actually feel, I haven't been complaining about the heat, like, at all this summer because it has been like in the 70s it's been like 75 is like the high sometime it would be 80s yeah Yeah, but yesterday i was like oh my god and then i was realizing wow this is like nothing like we used to experience so it only took two years yeah and and yesterday was the second hottest day in seattle so far this year what was the first 100 and that was no, it was like somewhere in the nineties as well, but oh. it was uh, it was like in June or May. Oh, uh, I'm thinking about this. I follow this one Twitter that just blogs about Seattle weather, but it's not kind of like a weather forecast. It's just like a person who is clearly is it you? No, I, I wish it was me. <laughs> it's just like some dude that's very interested in weather and like statistics from like years before, and so he said that the hottest it's ever been was like 104 or something, and it was yeah. like. It it's only been that high ever, and that's it. And I was like, that's not bad. That's wild. <laughs> and we know that it gets a lot hotter in a lot of other places. This is just the climate we're used to in Seattle. I know. Oh, and also, I read online that New York, because it's so hot. I mean, New York, it gets so fucking hot. It's in the just summer. like, you know, concrete and pavement it's radiating like heat everywhere. Yeah. Apparently, Ugh. it's so hot that the cockroaches are going to start flying around because the ground is too hot. And honestly... That's the apocalypse is starting yeah, now. I, that's global warming. Do cockroaches normally fly? Taco roach, what are you doing? Yeah, let me know. <laughs> Do you take flight on occasion? <laughs> no, but seriously, like I, as soon as I read that article... Arkle? Oh, my Orville God. Orville Redenbacher. <laughs> I realized, I was like, I didn't even know cockroaches 
flew. I, They're like chickens to me. They They're honestly, like a chicken insect. they have too many powers, and I don't <laughs> trust cockroaches. No, I don't. There's like, if I had a list of species, I do not trust monkeys and cockroaches. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And Donald Trump. <laughs> he is his own species. Yeah, that's very true. Oh my god, did you see that he called Obama like the founder of ISIS or something? Oh my god. I think he said that about Hillary at one point too. I think of I walked course. past the TV in the lobby of our apartment complex and I just saw the headline Trump calls Obama and Clinton founders of ISIS and I'm like, this is really or it was like, are Obama and Clinton really the founders of ISIS? Oh my and I'm god. like, they thought Marina Joyce was in ISIS. This I is, mean, like, at this, this is point, 2016. Is <laughs> this is 2016. This race is, I hope next one in four years from now is way more professional. I hope that there's like some sort of integrity that happens. Yeah, please. Ugh, but what was that worst. like tweet or something you said or you saw that was like Obama, if Obama's the leader of ISIS, he does really bad at branding because he keeps calling him ISIL. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, he's not good at branding. I'm like, that's <laughs> true. I just don't understand how he can say all of these things and people still vote. But then I remember the KKK still exists, so... Yo, How is that allowed? I mean, and they support him. Yeah, I know. And They're, like, behind him. And North Korea has said some favorable things of him. And I believe also the Nazi Party has also said favorable things oh. about Trump. So, you know, he's, he's, within he's running the, the gamut of all of the great fucking organizations. So, what are we drinking today? Uh, I just well, realized we haven't gone in on this. This is from the P.O. Box, which you can get the address from the newly redesigned website if you want to send us some coffee or tea to drink. Awesome. So, we made some iced tea because yeah. it's fucking warm. This is from Rebecca. Yes. And she sent us the largest bag of loose tea I've ever seen. I know. This is amazing. Now, this is from Tivana, and this is the Mint Majesty, which I know that Tivana is like a sub thing of Starbucks, and yeah. so upon smelling and tasting, I realized it's pretty much their... I don't know if they still sell these two teas, but they have a green tea that's very, like, zingy and citrusy, mm -hmm. and it's what they use for their shaken iced tea at this point. Okay. And they have, like, a mint tea that's not just, like, peppermint or spearmint. It's, like, a blend. Mm -hmm. That one brought my vocal cords back to life on a cruise, the, the prior <laughs> competition. Yeah. That tea alone. But this tastes like the both of them mixed together, and it's so zingy. I wonder if, like, Tazo and Tivana are kind of just, like, the same thing. I think now. they're phasing out Tazo. Am I wrong? I don't know. I need to, like, get the intel. I mean, we got the headquarters here in Seattle. We should go down there and be the like, yo, what's it's going on? It's not even the headquarters. It's well, like, like their, fake... cor their corporate headquarters are here. Oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. Where are they at? Uh, it's somewhere down in, like, Pioneer Square or something like oh, that. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to say, I know where they're fucking, their original store is, but it's not actually the original. Did you know that? Yeah, it's not the original. So, like, they make probably a lot of money just from people, like, going there and being lied to. Yeah, definitely. So, definitely speaking of being lied to, can I just talk again about No Man's Sky for a moment? Oh, God. Okay, guys, we, we gotta we got to We've talk played here. a little bit more since our last episode, so... Basically, if you're not, like, you didn't listen to the last episode or you don't know the drama, there's this whole thing where multiplayer doesn't actually exist or you won't be able to run into other people in the game because they were saying in interviews that it was the, sc the size of the game. Yeah, they, like... Like, the there's a, There's a video <laughs> on the internet that has multiple clips from multiple interviews where Sean is it's saying... It's just a compilation of... His, like, it's a beautiful drag, I would say. It's him saying explicitly that there will be multiplayer and that you will be able to run into people. That you will run into your friends. But then, like, he has, like, a kind of, like, a tick that he does when he says this. Like, a little, like, nervous giggle because Me. everybody says that, like, he knows he's lying and, yeah, like... Yeah, he has to be, like... And he just is saying... But it won't happen because of the scale of the universe. I bet he really didn't want anyone to figure out that it wasn't from the size. And then didn't someone say that there's literally, it's not even written in the code to do yeah, it? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if that has been proven, like, real or not, but people were saying that, speculating. like... Speculating. Yeah, speculating. I love this drama. Like, <laughs> I like video game drama because I, like, just watch it from above and I, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> But, uh, the I mean... meme content coming out of it. Mm -hmm. on Reddit is pretty funny. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm still enjoying it. I still find myself like wanting to get back in there and look at new planets. However, 
the fucking plant life on each planet looks basically the same. Sometimes there's some real weird ones, but... Yeah, there's, like, about maybe ten different plants that you will see just over, over and, and over, over again, again on every single planet with just different colors. They're called different <laughs> species, but they're, like, the same thing you've seen before, basically. Yeah, they're actually just... There's nothing different about yeah. them. Yeah, and, and some of the animals are like that, too. I mean, the there animals, are some weird ones, but... I don't know, like, I saw a really weird animal the other night... It was like a big four legged thing, but it had a weird tentacle for a face. No yeah. actual face. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, we yeah. were like, whoa, this is different. Yeah. And then I go on Twitter and I just go into the No Man's Sky hashtag and I immediately see, like, as one of the most recent tweets, someone else <laughs> who had discovered basically the same animal. Like, they had a screenshot of it. It was just yeah. different color. And I was like, oh my God, I thought that was so unique. Like, I don't I'm know. That part sad. I'm a little let down on, I guess. Yeah, I'm a little sad that, like, when you go on a planet that actually has life on it, because it's really fucking hard to find a planet yeah. that has abundant life on it. But Which I get. I get. It makes sense, but it still just makes it a little bit... Also, uh, all the caves look the <clears> same <throat> when you go through them. Just glowy cones. That's it. But, like, when you go onto a planet and it actually has life, there's a good chance that, like, 75% of the life forms are all going to look pretty similar. And just there's, like, like, three wild cards. Yeah, but they all kind of just look like morphed goats, kind of. Or, Yo, like... Oh, that's true. Am I not right? Like, They're, like, hefty goats with warts. Yeah, and, like, it's just different variations on that, and they're not really, like... I haven't seen, like, a huge fucking dinosaur yet or anything. We had Bartholomew. He was lit. He was just, like, this big... Kind of, like... Elephant gi- slash gazelle dinosaur kind gazelle. Of thing. Um, I mean, I love Tentacle Face until I realized he was a fraud. Um, oh, there was God. one fish in the sky that was really cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool when you see the fish that are not supposed to be in the sky, but they are. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll continue to play it, but I, I mean... It is a little disappointing. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know, but I'm still like I'm still having fun. But also, we've only had it for like what, like four days. Mm-hmm. So. The aliens are also very disappointing. Yo, every alien looks like Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. Yeah, <laughs> except for it has like different goggles. <laughs> mm-hmm, exactly. And there's no oh my god, that one Reddit post where there was like this is this whole game is a sausage fest. Like yeah. it's true, there's no like women in the game, but like at the same rate, they're all aliens anyway. So I don't really know if gender is a thing at all, but they all look male ish. Yeah. So it's kind of like just Stitch running around. Exactly. Yeah, and that guy that wears, like, the fencing equipment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know yeah. who I'm talking yeah. about. He's always got, like, a tablet. Yep, <laughs> yep. Anyway, so what else is new, Chris? I mean... Well, we never did a coffee fact. Oh, shit. Let's do it. All right, so I found here that coffee was originally chewed and not sipped. I could see that. A cup of joe may be your preferred method of consumption... Or, yeah, a cup of joe may be your preferred method of consumption, but coffee has not always been a liquid tree. According to a number of historians, the first African tribes to consume coffee did so by grinding the berries together, adding in some animal fat, and rolling these caffeinated treats into tiny edible balls of energy. So, you know, energy oh, bites. <laughs> so, like, what we do with dates. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Intrigue. It wasn't until 1000 CE that the beans were turned into a beverage, a special wine to be exact. Oh, my God. Does this... Prove evolution. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> We're a pro evolution podcast. Um, I had coffee caffeinated chewing gum before. Oh, really? It was coffee flavored too. That's weird. And it was too jazzy for me. I don't know how I would like that. I don't know. I would like the energy bite version of it. Oh, you know? yeah. That I would, that would be, be singy. Oh my god. I just remember this one time I was in high school. It was like, so my high school started at 10th grade back when I was in 10th grade. And then yeah. like the year after they started having yeah, mine started in ninth grade. I don't know. Most Weird. do. I don't understand what was happening. <laughs> um, so I remember 10th grade. I'm still super addicted to coffee. Have to have it in the morning. Our coffee maker breaks at home. Oh no. Obviously the worst. And Wawa? this was, <laughs> well, yeah, but I think it was like, my dad had like two different shifts and one of them would be, he would be already gone by the time I woke up in the morning. Uh, okay. So there was no coffee that I could get out, so I just had to go to fucking school, and I was on the bus, you know, the horror. Fucking horrible. And someone had this, like, caffeinated coffee gum, and I took it, or I chewed, I took it. <laughs> <laughs> I took the drugs. So, I had that, and I'm, like, in health class, and there's an actual video of me on my fucking Facebook, if I can find it. I don't know how it works if you're, like, not friends with the people anymore, but hmm. it's, like, me and one of those, like... What is the CPR dolls? But it's like a baby. Yeah. And I have caffeine 
and I'm also like having a crash point, uh, and I'm wearing like a puffy brown Abercrombie vest oh over God, I know a the, pink I know striped the vest. Abercrombie hoodie. And it's beautiful. Oh, God. If I could, like, find that video and, like, record it on my phone or something, I'll do it. But it's something else. Oh, my God. The worst thing in the world was the coffee maker breaking. And it would happen all the time. That's horrifying. <sighs> or when it would happen at work when the espresso machine wouldn't work. Oh, my God. A mess. I mean, that's the central business, you know? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> so I saw something on Twitter that I thought was necessary to bring up because we did talk about the Mandala effect or whatever. And what was, what was that again? That was the whole... Multi-universe yeah. theory, conspiracy theory. Gotcha. Basically, it's supposed to mean just like everybody remem- misremembers something. You okay. Know, like we all fucked it up. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't really... If we go through this, you can't really go off of my memory because, you know, Mine I Mine is legit, though. <laughs> like... And I had Berenstein books. Yeah. Okay. I like that one. No, I do believe that it was yes. Berenstein, but you can't, you know, take my words with a grain of salt. <laughs> gotcha. I understand. So someone sent me over like a list of things. Now I don't know the validity of these, but I just wanted to tell you that it fucked me up. Yeah. <laughs> reading it, and I don't know if it's true or not, but one of them I know that is true is apparently in Star Wars he never says Luke. I am your father. Yeah. He says, no. Why do we all quote that wrong? What? I, it's got to be like, what was that one Taylor Swift song that we were hearing wrong? Oh, everybody Starbucks was, lovers. Yeah. Yeah. But that's different. Like, Concrete, no chunk of what, dream tomato? <laughs> yes. True. But Luke and the word no don't sound familiar. Yeah, I know. Similar, not familiar. I've heard them before. <laughs> yes. But I, I just don't understand. I remember, like, reading that that was what it was before, that, like, it was no instead of Luke, but it still fucked me up the first time that I saw that, because I thought it was Luke. It's like every time I remember Stink Bugs went directly to Pennsylvania first. (laughs) I was like, whoa, I forgot. That really fucks me up. Okay, so another one, apparently, it's not mirror, mirror on the wall, it's magic mirror, which I'm sure she says the word magic in there somewhere, but I think us 90s kids all can recall quoting it, mirror, mirror on the wall. Yeah, like, and like, I played The Wolf Among Us recently, and they say mirror, mirror on now, the wall. Now, I wonder, is it mirror, mirror in the like old fable that's like a book? Yeah, because you know I know that's, about, well, Grimm. yeah, it's based off of like the comic books that are based off of the Grimm fables. So. Yeah, we had those books, but I, I was so creeped out by them, I wasn't allowed to read them. I would them. love to actually read those sometime Mm. they're spoopy yeah but in a cool way anyway so apparently it's magic mirror maybe that's just the disney word version but like i hadn't read the grim fairy tales yeah so that was my exposure to it yeah it was disney so mm, i'm a little perplexed i think that it was a mirror mirror me too i would i would stand by that statement (laughs) um another one is the forrest gump Oh, and it's, yeah. Life is like a box of chocolates. That's how I remember it. Yes. And then in that movie, apparently, it's life was like. That's. I always I always just hear as, as life's like a box of chocolates, like it's a contraction. Listen, I've been to Bubba Gumps. Like, <laughs> I know it's life is like. Jason. Jason, tell me. <laughs> Let Con- us know. Confirm this. <laughs> but, like, honestly, I just don't understand. I don't, it's really fucking me up, this whole thing. There were more. I can't remember the I rest. I remember one was, just, it's not Home Depot, it's The Home Depot. Yeah. Which, like, I knew that it was The Home Depot. It's just, like, Honestly, I, I'm I too probably, lazy to I, just yeah, say The. <laughs> I probably shortened that myself as a youngin. <laughs> as a youngin. All Home Depots smell the same. Oh, my God. Go in there and sniff it. Sawdust. Yeah. And orange. <laughs> and paint. Just the color of orange and cardboard. <laughs> and those paint mixing sticks that you always had extras of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love them. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but anyway, I just want to mix some paint. We have nothing to paint. No. I I think we really took for granted the fact that we were able to paint our, like, last apartment in Pennsylvania. We were able to paint that room. Yeah. And it's a good thing we did, because that was a fucking color of blue, man. I mean, white is cute, but an accent wall would tie this so well. Yeah, but not our last apartment, where it was, like, green with a brown oh, accent no, wall. Oh, no, fuck, <laughs> fuck that accent wall. <laughs> I remember we were looking at this one apartment that was a studio, which I'm really glad that we never got that one, because it had a bright orange accent wall. Like, Yo. the color of alarming. 
<laughs> you know, like, I, threatening orange. <laughs> I'm upset with the trend in Seattle that, like... No, it's I, just, like, modern. Yeah, that, like, there has to be the bright colors that are weird, like... They orange. want a lime green or an or a chartreuse. Chartreuse is, like, fucking is, hitting it right and now. And that's so mid-century modern, which I like mid-century modern. All right, I'm about to be, like, such a twa right now. But <laughs> I like neutrals. Yeah. What I would love to I do... I like muted colors. They have all of these, like, wall decals that basically make your wall look like it has a texture to it. Mm -hmm. And I've always been really intrigued by them because the wall behind her bed, if that was, like, a faux brick or something or, like, a faux concrete, that would look lit. Mm -hmm. But they're so expensive to get, like, the whole thing for your whole wall. Because if you don't get your whole wall, it just looks stupid. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. I always want those, though. They're on Hot Look all the time, and I'm like, yo. Mm -hmm. But they're so expensive. But, like, all the apartments here are just, like, really weird colors, especially the kitchens. They like to have weird cabinet colors. Yeah. I'm into... I love having white cabinets because it just goes with everything. How do you guys feel about having the cabinets of the island be a different color than the cabinets in the rest of the kitchen. I have very big opinions on this. <laughs> My dad did this in his log cabin that he just built, and you had some feelings. <laughs> Look, I would never tell them, but they have, like, oak cabinets and then a black cabinet on the island. It makes no sense. Yeah. It really bothers me. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it should all look the same. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. I like, I there's, see, I have two different types of vibes with kitchen. Because first of all, I pick all of the places I live at based on the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Now, our last place, not so We much. didn't really have like that yeah, big no of an option. So. <laughs> this one though, hella kitchen. Yeah, that's, that's we why did. we picked the place that we're in, you know, pricing kitchen. But I have like two moods for a kitchen. It's like white with... It's either like an, I mean, we have kind of in the middle of my two favorites because the ideal kitchen for me, if I'm going the light route would be like white cabinets, a white countertop, either if it's like a white granite or a white quartz, like yeah. just super clean and sleek. I know people are like, it's sterile. It's like a hospital. Good. I, I, <laughs> I want it. People's... I want it to look like it's uncomfortable because guess what? I don't want anyone here. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, oh, you'll see all your messes. I want dark countertops. It's like, that's I want disgusting. to see the dirt so I know when I need to clean it so I'm not being disgusting. I clean these black quartz countertops like every 10 minutes because I'm like, I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> it could be, who knows? And we don't even keep raw meat in the house. Mm-hmm. We're cleaning off Lyle's cat hair most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I would love like an all white kitchen or, you know, have like some gray or whatever. But then there's like the dark route, which is like, <laughs> Either a concrete countertop. Ugh, a concrete countertop me. would be so lit. Also, um, I know. Chelsea Handler's countertop you love. <laughs> oh my god, has anyone watched either, what is it, the documentary Chelsea Does? Chelsea Does or just Chelsea the show on Netflix? Yeah. She has in her home this countertop that looks like it's made of like all of these geodes. Like not just like marble or anything. It's like individual geodes. That are like meshed together and like formed together. Solidified into one big rect. You guys have to see it. Maybe I'll find a picture of it on Google. It's like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my Mm -hmm. life. I want her whole house. It's not (laughs) even my style necessarily, but I love it. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's so awesome. I know, but I I would either like a dark kitchen where you have like the dark cabinets and it's not uh, not dark as in like a cherry wood. (laughs) Oh, no, no, no. I mean like a cool tone brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like honestly a gray. I could do a gray, yeah. I've seen some of those like taupey gray kitchens in Seattle. I'm into that. It really... Honestly, anything that has a nice vibe I'm into. Like, I'll just cater my own (laughs) shit. We bought all of our furniture for our last apartment, like, in hopes that we would have a vibe that we have right now. So it all all works really well. Yeah, furniture and stuff. (laughs) It didn't necessarily, like, totally go in the last place, but it didn't matter because we knew it was, like, only temporary. Temporary, yeah. But... All right, guys, so we're going to go into some questions, but I just wanted to remind you first that today is the yes. day that our new merch is launching Woo! and the sale is starting. 10% off the entire store. No code, it's whatever. It's just there. We got Coffee with Rachel merch. We got Bye Bye Phobia stuff. We got binge things. It's just. Yeah, and I totally something. did not post the, in typical Rachel fashion, we forgot to post the uh, quiz or like the poll to see like which colors you guys liked for a possible new mug. I'm not so I will do that, maybe. <laughs> I knew that I wanted the teal. Yeah. I don't care. 
It's a beautiful color. The, I think the green was a little bit... It was too much of, like, that chartreuse that we yeah. were just talking about. And the yellow is cute, but I think it would have lo- washed Lila out, so... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so, anyway, let's get into our question. So, what did the Patreon benches have to say? Um, all right, so we have Gigi has asked, I know y'all don't want kids, but if you had to pick out a boy and a girl name, what names would you pick? Oh, I really man. have not thought about this at all. I used to, but I feel like I don't... Oh my god, Lila. <laughs> Lila. She's like, it's I me. always <laughs> loved the name Lila, so I'm glad that I got to name my first Yeah, but Squeezy, should be a boy name you had in <laughs> yeah, mind. <laughs> I um, I don't know what I would do. I feel like I would have to think about it really hard and I would have to pick like a name that had a good meaning and I yeah, would look I don't want to be my name means fucking lamb <laughs> like who thought my sister is lioness of god my, and I'm a fucking lamb and mine's like about like Jesus Jesus usually but that's so. pretty like important yeah but I mean you know? not for me personally well yeah but they didn't know that was gonna happen <sighs> I would just probably name all my kids after plants. So we'd have a fern, we'd have oh a God. lily, we'd oh a lily Vanderwoodson. Oh, we'd have I don't know. Lila's trying to steal your cactus. Right <laughs> we'd I, Iowa. Yeah, like I don't know. <laughs> Lipstick vine. <line. laughs> but yeah. I don't know. Oh shit. I would really want it to be like unisex names though. I'd be that person. Just because like, hey, well, I don't know what they're gonna be like, right? I I do yeah, no. like the name Spencer. I do, too. For a girl. Oh, I was supposed to be named Spencer if I was a boy. And then they fucked it up, and they were like, mm, it's That would have been Rachel. so cool if your name was Spencer. As if it can't be a beautiful woman's name. I mean, I think it's so sexy. Yeah. Ugh. I, w- I feel like I would be a different person mm-hmm. if I had that name. I'm a Rachel. <laughs> I'm a Ruble, if I'm really honest. <laughs> All right, the other question, not really a question, is from Bridget, and she said, I'm on SSI disability for PTSD, so I always enjoy hearing about how you navigate your daily challenges, especially when people are jerks. Well, that's good to hear. I I still am at the point where it's so new that I still feel weird talking about it because I don't really know a lot. I mean, it was just recently that you got the the word, the like the diagnosis. Because it's like I get that like I still have anxiety and depression, but like for so long I thought like, okay, so that's what it is. But now it's like a whole new thing and that explains so many of my reactions to things. Mm -hmm. But you get, like, once you tell people, it's like, oh, well, why? And then it's like, I can't believe you're asking me this. Like, I can't. You know what I mean? You wouldn't ask, like, somebody who came home from Iraq be like, so why do you have PTSD? I know. It's because people that aren't in the war don't have it, you know? Yeah, I know. But millions of people have it, so... I'm glad that if me bringing it up at all, like, makes people, like, know that, you know? Yeah. But it's very weird for me to talk about yet just because it's so new to my vernacular about Mm -hmm. describing my fucking shit, you know? Yeah. Can you and Chris try out next Food Network star and have a Rachel Cooks on it? I'm not going to say no. Oh, my God. (laughs) What if? I don't know. We could not compete as, like, a group, though, you yeah, know? Yeah, like, we, it would just be me or him, and we all know who'd win that. Yeah, but. yeah. You, <laughs> it would not be me. <laughs> I would be there, because I would probably dump you if you if you went and I didn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that would be the ultimate betrayal. You are Eddie. That's true. Eddie's million dollar cook-off. I know. That would be, like, me trying out to become, I don't know, the next Star Wars. <laughs> what? <R2-D2. laughs> Anyway, oh, fuck. but yeah, I would love that. I just feel like I'd be, I would want to try out for a show where I'd actually get a show. Yeah. <laughs> I know that that's the concept, but I just don't trust it. I feel like I would just want to like pitch an idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So we got a couple emails as well. And this one is about menstrual cups. Ooh, I love this topic. <laughs> it's been a while since I talked about that silicone joy. <laughs> Hi, Rachel, Chris and chunks. And it's got a TM next to chunks. <laughs> <laughs> I got a moon cup around the same time Rachel Mm -hmm. got her diva cup, and I'm finally able to use it. It works great, but when Rachel first started using hers, and this is an awkward-ass question, did she also struggle with the sensation that she was about to give birth to her diva cup while taking shits? Yes. No one mentions this aspect. Did I forget to mention that? (laughs) Damn it. 
Maybe I hadn't experienced it yet. <laughs> is that like? It's true because like when you're bearing down yeah. to take a shit, you're it's inevitably yeah. gonna be moving other things. Yeah, and so, so yeah, <laughs> I've never had it like come out or anything, which is great. Um, God, imagine it just shooting out. <laughs> what did I do? Who made me laugh so hard that it shot out? Oh God. Uh, well, it didn't shot out. Okay, that's I don't want to scare anyone. It I feel definitely like it was came when we were the at ramen with Nick and all of them. <laughs> <laughs> told me afterwards <laughs> <laughs> they said something we were like walking around and they said something and I laughed so hard that I felt my diva cup like really make itself known to me <laughs> and then later I was like Chris I laughed so hard that my diva cup flew out <laughs> so if you guys are listening hey you're funny <laughs> Uh, the email goes on to say, what were the weirdest things you had to get used to when you switched? It's also hella weird working a regular job and having to change my cup at work on heavier days and then go back at, to look at my coworkers in the eye with the moon emoji face like it didn't just have a blood party in the bathroom. Oh my God, that is true. I feel like I have a secret when I'm using it. I'm like, you guys are not in on this. You don't I, know about right now. You're talking to me and I have a cup in my vagina. And it's been there for 12 hours and it doesn't need to go anywhere. You know, like it's like I feel so smug. Um, I'd say the weirdest part was the first time I inserted it and I couldn't find it and I had to have Chris look. Yeah. I straight up needed him to pull it out of me because I could not find it. And I know that sounds like it's really scary, but I promise it was just because I didn't know you had to push. Mm -hmm. It literally is like you're giving birth a little bit, but you get so used to it so easily and then just the fact that you don't have to change it that often is like key yeah and it's also really weird but oddly satisfying to see like when you pour it out like how mm. much is there because it's like you never knew before you know can you get toxic shock if you have it in for like i don't know like 18 hours or something like that the or reason is that like why is because it's not open to the air at all. Yeah, yeah. So the, there wouldn't be... And it can't... Like, it's antimicrobial. So yeah, it can't, like, yeah, form yeah. bacteria. Okay. Yeah, that's what I kind of I mean, figured. But. you would just have to... The reason why you have to... They say 12 hours probably just as a guideline because they don't want you to overflow and, yeah, it. Yeah, they don't know how heavy you're going to be. In the yeah. Way, so. I honestly can't really see why you couldn't leave it in longer than that. And I know I have definitely done that. And nothing bad has happened to me at all. Um, it just sounds like all around a really great alternative. Because tampons, tampons, they're literally like, and I didn't even get to use tampons right away. I was a pad girl for many, many years because I was afraid of them. And mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be like uncomfortable or painful. Yeah. And then I got into them just because they were more convenient or more discreet when you're wearing certain things. But it's frustrating because, you know, it says eight hours max, but for it's really like six. Yeah. And even that, it's like you're already going to be Your anxiety it. kicking in, you Me, know? Me, it's more like three. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I would be like so paranoid. I'm like, I'm going to fucking die. Because honestly, <laughs> I would be the person that would die from toxic shock. Like, that's just something that would happen, oh, I just feel. But yeah, it was always nerve-wracking. And then also, like, it leaks. I mean, I know I'm sure people have had leak problems with menstrual cups, but it's because they just didn't have it in right. Mm -hmm. But tampons always fucked me up. Always was the brand I was actually <laughs> using. Not to drag them, but honestly, yes. Thoughts on waterbeds? Not my, for me. My Cat mom owner. had a waterbed did for she? a really long time. Yeah, and then... My aunt and uncle did. Mm, it was really weird, honestly. It's watery? Well, yeah, and it's just like... You there's just like waves going on in it and shit and like I could imagine it would be relaxing but I'm too anxious that I would pop it in some way mm -hmm. and then uh my sister's ex-fiance really wanted a waterbed and so they had a California King waterbed and that was just like that just like screams white trash <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like the highest level okay god I yeah no I just am not a fan of a waterbed I I don't know like what is the benefits of having it? Like, I don't know if it's comfortable, but, like, say you're in an apartment complex, well, in all the apartment complexes we've lived in, it always specifies that if you have a water bed, you have to be on the first floor. Yeah. But then, yeah, like, I don't want that. I just like having a nice memory foam. I like the memory foam. It's a little warm. Yes. But you can just wear less. <laughs> um, okay. What's your opinion on all of these crazy Oreo flavors floating around now? The Swedish Fish flavor just came out, and I've heard there's been Orange Cream School and Jolly Rancher flavors. Do you guys even like Oreos? All right, Orange Cream School is not as weird. I would maybe enjoy that, but like, if it's not a chocolate cookie, if they do their like vanilla cookie with an Orange Cream School, 
I liked it back in the day when the craziest you got was there was a mint one, there was a peanut butter one, and then you just had like orange flavored icing for fucking. It wasn't Halloween. even flavored; it was just orange the color, but they tasted better in general. Yeah, for Halloween. Oh, I missed the. Orange. And then like you had inside out like you know that was like a thing they did where yeah. it's like chocolate cream with the vanilla cookies i liked those yeah like that shit and then they're doing all this weird ass crap i feel like there's swedish fish seems really weird because it's the chocolate cookie yeah that's sounds disgusting and there's look. jolly rancher that's also like i don't want fruit peppermint flavors. i'm sure it's good oh my god trader joe's where they have those peppermint ones oh god and then they're covered in chocolate it's oh. like dark chocolate too it's like oh i'm gonna Fucking God. buy them. We have to like really be careful with those. I know because you can eat them so easily. Oh. They're so rich. I don't know. I'm not a big Swedish fish um, person when it's not the candy. I remember I had at Rita's water ice. Oh yeah, they had a Swedish fish yeah, flavor. I've tried that, and it made me sick. Yeah, it was I, so I, sweet. I tasted it and I've had like maybe the small cup of it before, but I never got like a big gelato. Because I always would get a lemon. Yeah. I liked a tart. I was the basic root beer chocolate kind of gelato person. That's kind of nice, you know. But they also had butterscotch crimpet, tasty cake flavored water ice at Rita's. I don't remember that one. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it was just by my area, but I remember going to the Franklin Mills Mall and Mm -hmm. they had it. Or wait, no, maybe it was in the Chamonix Mall because I think they had the Rita's inside the mall and it was open year round. That's wild. Yeah. It was the only Rita's I've ever... If you don't know what Rita's is, it's basically the only thing the East Coast has and it's like... (laughs) It's the only thing ever. People don't know what water ice is and I I get it. It sounds dumb as hell. And honestly, it's a stupid name. (laughs) It's a mixture between a slush and a snow cone. Okay, it's like a vibrant. You know, <laughs> you have uh, to experience this. Just, just look, Google Rita's water ice, and you'll see the texture. You know, yeah. it's delicious though. But yeah, it's always something that's only open like in spring and summer. The first day of spring when it opens, and, and you the get a lines free one. are fucking so long. Mm-hmm. And <sighs> then that one in the Shamity Mall, the yeah. Shamity Wall. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just Say that five times. Fast. I saw <laughs> online that they're finally trying to there's like a huge um i think it's like a gofundme or an indiegogo and it's trying to remove the red skin from the logo and the fucking team oh, name wow. and everything because yeah the chamonix fucking yeah, yeah, team yeah, yeah. mascot is a red it's horrible if the fucking nfl can get rid of washington yes just they're gone now <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i mean like if the nfl why the fuck is this random nobody fucking high school i don't football care team if it's still fucking have to? tradition it's offensive it's so offensive and apparently there's been like people like because you know there will be like different people that are native american that'll be on the board for the school board or like mm-hmm. just like high up in the school you know and yeah. they every year bring it to the school board and nothing ever happens and this year i guess like people are really really <sighs> trying i think it's because a lot of the young kids are are like lit. this is <laughs> fucking stupid and outdated and really bad yeah like i cannot believe that the nfl was able to get that to happen and the chamonix can't yeah it's a fucking high school and no one is like oh, i Played football at the It's Shammy. not like one of those. It's not high college football. Yeah. Like no one gives a shit. Actually, nope. and we don't even have a good team. At least the last time I checked, <laughs> but I, I haven't checked in years. Yeah, my high school's football team was terrible. We actually had an amazing women's basketball team. Wow. That was like our we had good team. The like one of the best things at our school was our cheerleading team. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, they like won national competitions and stuff. Our choir was like that. Uh, okay, it was like choir and women's basketball, and I think field hockey was pretty popular too. Hmm. But yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, and band, of course. Yeah, they're always racking up things. <laughs> uh, I got another email question here. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey there, coffee binchos. I was inspired to write to you concerning the fact that I was starting therapy within the next week in Woo. order to help deal with lifelong depression and anxiety. Do you have any advice for first time visits? Ooh, it's always weird, so you'll know that. You know what I mean? Like it's there's no chill way that that can happen because they're going to be probing you with a lot of weird yeah, questions. Yeah, it's like, I'm going to go, I've never been to therapy, but it's going to be like, you code meet this person you've never met before and they're going to tell them your deepest, darkest secrets. And well, like- not quite. I, the first session is usually like either 
at this point, I mean, it depends, but like most, of, at least from my experience, you go through and you're not meeting your like actual therapist that day. You just have like someone else that is a therapist that works there and they ask you basic questions, but I mean, they're very personal, of course. And then at that point they can kind of judge yeah, because who to give there are to. therapists that specialize in different yeah. things. So, I mean, it's just really weird to, you know, hearing yourself answering like, you know, when's the last time you've thought about suicide or, you know, it's just like, it's very, and you have to give honest answers. That's a yeah. big, and it, but like when you're saying it, you're like, wow, I'm wow. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and it's like a self realization to say it out loud instead of it just being in your head. Yeah. And like answering it like that. And like, it almost feels like you're at the doctor and it's just very weird, but that's literally the weirdest part, yeah. in my opinion. I feel like it gets so comfortable because they know how to make you feel comfortable when you actually get your real therapist and just keep admitting to yourself that, or like telling yourself that you just need to be honest because if you lie in there at all, like it's, you're not helping yourself and they do not give a shit. They will not judge you. They are there to help you. And it's like literally the one place that you can be 1000% completely honest and you know that it's just between the two of you. And so yeah. that's how you can get the real help. And if you hold back, then you're just really just making it like that's when you're it starts going back. slow. Because yeah. that's how my first therapist was in Pennsylvania. And I didn't tell him anything about the sexuality struggle when I knew that that was like on the mind, very mm -hmm. hard in my life at the moment. And I was just focusing on the family stuff. Yeah. And only this therapist that I've been with now for a year have I talked about sexuality. And it has been the most incredible thing that has ever happened. So, yeah. Yeah, it's It's good. all good, man. Yeah. You're going to love it, hopefully. <laughs> and if you don't, they're not going to be upset. You can get placed with another person. That's another thing to remember. Yeah. You don't have to, like, be stuck with this person. And it, if you don't click with them, you'll kind of know when you do, too. The, the second part of this email is also my significant other has been through therapy in the past and completely understands all that I'm going through. Cool. But I am wary of how much I should share with him. Hmm. We share everything with, with each other, but there should there be a, li a line drawn on how much is discussed? I got to say, <laughs> once I started going to therapy, I realized how much, like, and I would come home. These were conversations where I would just be exhausted and I wouldn't even be able to, like, you're so emotional sometimes in there that you're yeah. not really remembering exactly what you talked about or discovered. And so there would, you know, it's like this whole hour that was just for me. And I honestly like it that way personally. Mm -hmm. Um, but I of never course, like, probe. yeah, Chris literally is just like, how are you? And I'm like, I'm good. Or if I'm you, not. If you feel like sharing, if you discovered something, if you had something interesting happen, you are more than welcome to and stuff, but I'll yeah. never, I never feel like I'm entitled. So what'd you talk about? <laughs> I've literally had people that I've only hung out with twice ask me shit like that. Yeah. And I was like, like are you, you are not entitled to that information. <sighs> you don't have to share it with a single person at all. I know. So the things that I share usually are like things that I really learned about myself or, like, big connections that I've made. Like, when the PTSD yeah. thing hit, you told me about that. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, things that he can help me with, obviously. Like, if there's something that he's doing that's, like, triggering me in some way or whatever yeah, that he yeah, doesn't yeah. know about, of course, I'm going to, like, let you know. But, I, yeah, like, I mean, I don't feel the need to share all the time, but when I do, it's usually, like, just something that I feel, like, getting an outside opinion on or sharing at all, like, would help me. But I try not to, like, overshare just because, like, I know that it can, like, just because you're not a therapist yourself, you know, mm -hmm. it can sometimes hurt the progress. Because, like, we've talked about, you know, oh, should Chris come in to therapy for, like, a session or two just to, like, I don't know, learn what it's like for me or maybe, like, get some advice on what to do himself. And I, you know, we talked, you know, together, my, me and my therapist, and we were like, you know, I don't actually think that's going to work for, like, the progress, like, that I need. And, of course, I don't really know yeah. because I'm not a professional, but, you know. I think that it's... She, she likes, for me, and I can tell this, that, like, it's the one hour of the week that literally involves no one else. Yeah. And it's like, I don't really take care of myself well at all. So it's like, that's that one hour where she's getting taken care of. Yeah. And so that's where we're at. I, th I, I like that you don't share much with me because 
I feel like if you share it with me, I'm obviously going to want to, like, talk about it. And, like, this way you can kind of, like, work through the things on your own and, like, realize things on your own. Kylie said I'd realize things this year, and I am. <laughs> Yo, honestly, the deepest qu- <laughs> We didn't know. We dragged her. <laughs> we straight up yelled at her. Oh, and then here God. we are realizing things every day, man. Okay. Um, have you or Chris ever rode the ferry? I no. We've not have ridden a ferry I? here. No. I mean, I've rode a ferry in general. Yeah, we haven't really been to that side of the old puge. <laughs> yeah, the puge. The sound. <laughs> um, just because we're, you know, lame. So I see a couple questions here just about uh, how are you enjoying Harry Potter. So oh. how's your progress? Okay, well, I'm about halfway through the first book. I thought I was going to be able to, like, finish in the last two days, but I've just been so busy that I didn't. Well, okay. No man's Let's sky, be honest. Like. <laughs> I'm like, I've been so busy exploring planets in space. Okay? <laughs> but I've waited, like, two years for this game. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I found out. <laughs> Chris, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> okay, Listen. To get background, I've never read the books. This is my first time, and I've only seen the movies one time. <laughs> Once. And I was at the shore. Probably with sunburn, so who knows what I yeah. actually, you know, yes. dissolved. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm at the sorting part in the book, right? And, man... It was a plot twist that Hermione's not in Ravenclaw. <laughs> I didn't know. I, this uh, whole time. This whole fucking time. I've seen her wear the fucking tie. I've yeah. seen her in the tie. And yet here I am being like, she's smart. She's Ravenclaw. And yeah. honestly, why isn't she in Ravenclaw? Just because she needed to be... You know, it makes sense. You know, the bravery part of it. I get it. I get it. But I just... I don't at the same time. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> um... You know, and yeah, <laughs> I figured that out, but I'm really enjoying it. It's very nice. I'm glad. It's got a lot of rich detail, and that's what I'm into. Good. And it's an easy read, mm-hmm. which I'm also into. You're also surprised at the number of Weasleys that exist. Oh my god, there's like <laughs> 10 extra, like, and I know a lot about them now, and I'm like, oh shit, that's a lot. <laughs> that's true. They really don't touch on a lot of the Weasleys yeah. in the movies. I thought you were going to say on a lot of the Luigi's for a minute, <laughs> and I was like, you're yeah, right. Yeah, Luigi. Yeah, what's the other one? It's just Luigi and Waluigi. That's it? Baby Luigi, I mean. Uh, Wario. Wario. Oh, that's, that's different. Yeah, it's He Mario. just looks like that. I mean, I guess technically they all look the same. <laughs> anyway, I don't like any of those Mario bitches. Oh I'm honest. <laughs> I like all the animals, like Birdo, Yoshi, those guys. Mm-hmm. Mario can honestly not really. <laughs> not feeling them. Okay. I love all the Coffee with Rachel episodes. Question. Do you ever feel guilty, but you're not able to pinpoint why you have that horrible feeling? Yes. Well, welcome to my fucking indigestion. <laughs> That's me. In Just a nutshell. On, on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's not fun. A lot of times I feel guilty that I'm, like, playing a game or doing something fun that's not yeah. productive. Like, you work 40 hours a week, plus you help do this. And sometimes you help me with my video shit, and then you play video games for, like, maybe three hours <laughs> yeah, a week. Yeah, and then I feel guilty about it. I'm like, shit, I should really be doing something else right But now. then we could Twitch stream it, and then it technically is work. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> there she is. If you could invite one Food Network personality onto Rachel Cooks or Coffee with Rachel, who would it be? <sighs> Just one? Ah, uh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey? Zakarian. Okay. Yeah, no, I... But that's wrong. Like, I just feel wrong, because that's leaving out everyone. I know, like, this is not shading anybody on the network, because we would have each and every one of you if we could. Yeah. But I might say Michael Simon. Yo! Because he is just a jovial jovial. ball of fun. And he's... I follow him on Twitter, and he's like, literally, people just be like, so, uh, I'm making a roast this weekend. Do you have any spice rubs you recommend? And he answers everything. Like, they'll be like, ah, Swiss cheese, what's your favorite brand? Like, every question. And he just quote retweets it, and it's like, he fucking cares. Mm -hmm. I love him. Guan or Shelly, too. I would yeah. love to hang out with Guano Shelly. You know, all of those options aren't bad to look at. I mean, say. fuck, <laughs> I'll hang out with Bobby Flay if he brings his cat. Oh, my God. Nacho meeting Lila. Oh. oh. Honestly, who's bigger? <laughs> I think that Nacho, I think Nacho is, is fucking, fucking huge. huge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that cat is the biggest cat I've ever seen. <laughs> is that like a Maine Coon that's like an orange? 
I, I feel like it is. <laughs> that, honestly, that one post that's like, oh, I've got a Bernie's poodle with a Siberian husky twist, and they're like, I, I have a cat. Her name's Rita. She's orange. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Okay. Um, currently binge listening to all the podcasts at work. What was Rachel's blush in her sex toy video? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh my god, it was actually, I planned it. I wore Super Orgasm by NARS. <laughs> because I was like, I saw the palette right there, and I was like, oh my god, I'm filming a sex toy video. Like, this works. And I planned that my lipstick would match the toys. I'm such a oh twat. Oh my god. But you just, guys should watch that video if you haven't seen that. I had a lot of fun that making it. That was fucking hilarious. I gotta do another one. <laughs> yeah, honestly, just do that every video. <laughs> Everyone gets upset because I call them like a drunk review and it's not actually a review but it's literally just because I want to use that fucking background music yeah and like the format of my usual drunk drunk. reviews (laughs) but yeah exactly and be drunk because honestly a sober video of me holding up sex toys is just going to be me being like yes and (laughs) like drunk unboxing just does not have the same ring to it no oh my god did you see there's like a new video series which like honestly why didn't I come up with this myself but it's called high Kia and people get stoned and then they build Ikea furniture like they see if that they can do it. That is the most brilliant idea I've ever heard of. I know. Like the first time like they did acid which is like okay would not recommend that one <laughs> but No I would think it would be funny if it was you know just weed but maybe they could do different types like an edible or like a fucking oh, soda God. or something like that you a know. Soda. I hear the sodas will get you. Yeah. I haven't I hear had everything that. will get you. <laughs> It'll get you. <laughs> oh fuck. Please drag anti-GMO people. Listen, GMOs have been proven to, to like not, not be any different, really. Yeah, and I can't believe that the Obama administration made it so that you have to label all foods as having GMOs in them if they do. Yeah, now. like it's not. It's just a selling point for many people. So like, now whenever, it's gonna be like organic or gluten free or something like yeah. that. Yeah, you know? it's gonna be like non-GMO. Literally, anytime I see some like cultural appropriation ass fucking binge being like, "Oh, this food is like non-GMO." And, like, organic, I'm like, is it, though? And also, that doesn't mean shit. That's just buzzwords to get you to buy it. Guys, just watch Fed Up, the documentary. Watch know? anything. Yeah. <laughs> General. Really opened my eyes. Which social media platform gives most kudos when you give slash get a follow? And do you fangirl if a favorite follows you? Um... Uh, I don't know if I experience it. I mean, usually on Instagram, like, if I follow someone on Instagram, they're like, oh, my God. Like, if it's someone that wasn't expecting me to follow them, but, like, it's, I don't know. I'm always like, why do you care? You know, it's just me. I mean, I don't, I don't really see that. And, I mean, I'm only really active on Twitter, to be honest. So, (laughs) Um, but if I had to say, do I fangirl when people follow me? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, definitely. Are you kidding? Even when they just, like, fave a tweet, I'm like, yes. Yes. You know, sometimes you'll like screenshot and send me a text and be like, oh my Anyone god. Anyone from Food Network, I'm like, secretly, I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not really that secretly, if I'm being honest. Do y'all have your dicks out for her on bed? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> totally, 100%. <laughs> I like, I didn't think that that kind of joke was going to catch on because I thought people would be like, that's disrespectful. He's dead, you know? Well, honestly, it's like, it's a month afterwards, so everybody just waited like a little bit for like time to pass. It's only like, been a month? I don't know how Shut long. Shut the fuck no, up. No, I just said, a month i don't know how long it's been it's but like, been like that was like the beginning of it all yeah. did you see the dolphin what okay a dolphin at some sort of zoo or something snatched a bitch's ipad and threw it into the water Yo. snatched it and then she like grabbed it and like ran away dolphins are reckless <laughs> dolphins are savage and honestly really scary fuck your technology <laughs> they're literally like not cool animals actually and they're too smart and that's why they're like rebelling honestly if we're gonna have a planet of the apes situation it's gonna be fucking dolphins the yeah, moment they definitely. realize that they can evolve to walk we're all fucked yeah the dolphin apocalypse is coming <laughs> That's the title of the episode. It's absolutely <laughs> coming. I'm serious. Oh, fuck. Look up, like, it, I mean, it's scary shit. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Um, oh, we have a quiz here. It's, are you an indoor cat or an outdoor cat? Oh, fuck. All right. Okay. I got this here. We got to take this because, you know. <laughs> Beautiful. Do you have it loaded up? Yes, I do. All right. So I got, how would you describe yourself? Agile, lazy, secretly evil, or cute? Oh. Out of I'm these cute. options, I'm definitely cute. I'll say lazy. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, none of these fit you besides cute. Yeah. Which collar best suits your personality? We got a black one with silver studs. We got a red and black striped one. A blue collar with a like classic clip. And classic clip. A pink one that's got like some bells and stuff on. I'm gonna pick the black and silver. You know, a little grunge collar. I'm gonna pick that fucking basic blue one because you always say I look good in blue. <laughs> he does. He really does. Okay. What's your biggest pet peeve? Poor grammar, noisy eaters, double negatives, the dog. <laughs> um, mm. I'm gonna say noisy eaters. Okay. I was gonna say that too, but just in the way of being different than you, I'm gonna just pick the dog because that's how I feel about like other people and you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i get okay. you Dub, who, i don't ever get upset about double negatives yeah it's not that bad i can't not love it yeah <laughs> go ahead uh pick a clothing item to completely cover in hair perfect uh, it's a black t-shirt a black hoodie black dress or black socks i'm gonna pick the black dress i'm gonna pick the hoodie um, what kind of exercise do you prefer pouncing stretching climbing or sleeping Ooh, Ooh, I like stretching. I'm a yoga binge. I, every answer has been different so far, so I'm going with stretching as well. Oh, um, trail. <laughs> if you weren't a cat, which animal would you be? There's a dog, an elephant, a tiger, and a rabbit. He didn't know what that animal. He's like, uh, a tiger. Oh, uh, what is this? <laughs> also, it was National Elephant Day the other day. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, I'm going to pick elephant because, one, dry skin, two, <laughs> the memory. The snoot. <laughs> <laughs> the snoot. It's yes, I can one. sniff a lot. <laughs> I'm going to pick the rabbit. Cool. Okay. Um, what's your life motto? Find joy in the ordinary. Oh <laughs> Choose happiness now. Um, everything happens for a reason. You only live once or you only live nine times. I'm going to say none of these. Yeah, I'm going to say you only live nine times because honestly, everything else I don't like. I'm going to say you only live once because honestly, I should. Nah. <laughs> Pick a delicious afternoon snack. We've got canned tuna, uh, salmon, uh, roast turkey, or, and grass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to pick the salmon. Let's be yeah, real. Yeah, you're going to pick the salmon. That's pick, a nice fucking salmon. I'm going to pick the bird. Um, and finally, pick something to scratch. Um, oh, I thought that was a planet. Yeah, I straight what? up thought that was Saturn. Okay, it <laughs> looks like a bug bite. Um, it's like, supposed to be your arm. Yes, yeah, so like a bug bite. Um, a record player thingy, a lottery ticket, or the face of an enemy. I'm going to pick the lottery ticket. I'm going to pick a bug bite, because that's real. Oh my god. I'm an indoor cat. Me too. <laughs> You're the king of the castle. You love to let your imagination run wild and make your own fun. You've got a very calm nature about you, and you can be very inquisitive. You're an introvert, but that doesn't mean you don't love socializing with your friends and family, and you can be very affectionate just on your own terms. Sometimes new surroundings can be overwhelming to you. Wow, why is this so Wow, real? this one is so fucking real. Too what the much, fuck? too much. <laughs> I, I just like I'm learning I'm fucking squeezy like <laughs> the hell um, oh fuck and you can be very affectionate just on your own terms sometimes news blah, blah, blah. more hands means more food right no oh my god <laughs> yeah, true you like schedules plans and doing things your way and nothing wrong with that oh and don't forget you're adorable wow this is nice wow that was actually like pretty spot on fuck god um damn it, well that quiz read me <laughs> <laughs> that's good um, have you watched the Disney Channel original movie, Full Court Miracle? I definitely have. I've probably seen them all. I have not. That's the one where they have, like, the really tall basketball girls, right? I, I would have to assume so. I'm just hoping. <laughs> On a scale to pumpkin mash to pumpkin spice latte, how excited are you for fall? Uh, well, um, we just ordered the Bath Body Works fall scent candles, you know, first order of yeah. the season. We did some pumpkins, but we did get one final summer candle. Yes. You know, suntan. But the wallflowers that we got are also yeah. fall scents. But it's not fall until I get a leaves candle, which we didn't get this time because we were like, let's wait. We know what that one smells like, you know? Yeah. I am ready for fall, though. I'm at the point where I am ready. Yeah. I mean, once it's 90 degrees, I'm like, all right, I'm over this. I honestly... August is always the month that I'm like, all right, I'm over this shit. I skated by this summer without having to buy that many, like, summery clothing items. Yeah. And it's been amazing. I'm just ready for fall so I can continue building the wardrobe <laughs> I care about. And, yeah. You ever think that it's wild that, like, we always live in, like, climates where, you know, we have to purchase clothing for 
both types of seasons. I was thinking about this the other oh, day. Oh, like if you live in L.A., technically you can get or by. Or Hawaii, I was thinking. True. You know, you just have to, all your wardrobe, you don't have to worry about buying for different seasons because you just have, like, basically one. And, and you, you just layer if it's a little bit chillier. Yeah, it's wild. You get, I like, mean, one code if you need it. I don't think I could ever live in a place that did not have seasons because if I it love did, the it would have to just be only fall and winter. Yeah, I don't care. Definitely, but with sunshine, mm-hmm. like I would want some sunshine. Um, have you guys ever watched Bunheads? I've I'm rewatching to hold me over until the Gilmore Girls revival. So I heard. Well, first of all, Bunheads was written by the same people that did Gilmore Girls. Oh, and everybody loves it because it's very witty. This. It's I think about. Dancing ballet, maybe bunheads. That makes sense. Oh, uh, gotcha. Okay. Um, I didn't watch it, but I do hear it's very cute. So maybe I should. Yeah. But we are actually in the middle of rewatching Gilmore on the side. Honestly, for every our low time key chill nights. <laughs> every time that show is rewatched, my emotions are only just like heightened. amplified. <laughs> Your emotions show. are heightened. Oh my god, I'm a vampire. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it's true though, like. Every time I, I feel something, like it doesn't, it doesn't get old ever. When I can watch it. Luke gets pissed that Dean broke up with Rory, and he flips out, and he like makes her the pancakes, and he's like, "I'll get you the strawberries. You want the strawberries?" Like, <laughs> oh. ugh, it kills me. And that's a show that like I've probably seen because I watched it all the way through like with Netflix three times. Yeah, well, but, this is the third. Right, we're on the third. Okay, yeah. so like that's convenient. But like before that, it was just like you'd come home from school and there'd be a random episode on ABC Family. And and that's what I would do before dinner. Every night I'd watch like three episodes of it because they would do like a little block. Yeah. And yeah. And then the new ones when they were on like the CW. God. When The Vampire Diaries finishes, do you think you would be up for any other vampire shows or movies? Not Twilight, like True Blood. I have watched like most of True Blood. I just never finished it. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it was good. It was definitely like the what Vampire Diaries would have been if it were on Showtime or whatever True yeah, Blood was yeah. on, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, would, I don't know. I would watch another vampire show if there was one that came out that like looked good and I was interested in, but I'm not going to specifically seek one out because it has vampires in it, you know? I like vampire stuff. I'm into it. If they yeah. have another one, I don't know. I don't know if like we should go and watch the originals because like I stopped watching that like early on and you watched a little bit more. I got like 16 episodes into the first season of that and I was like nope. But there is crossover. I don't know. Yeah that's what I'm saying because like if the Vampire Diaries ends are they going to keep the originals going? I don't know. Guys please watch the Vampire Diaries. I know. Please. Oh I like this. (laughs) Fuck Mary Kill. Gek, Corvax, and Viking. Oh my god those are three of the uh, four races in No Man's Sky. Okay well I'm definitely gonna fuck Corvax. I'm gonna marry the Gek. Gek is the ones that look like Stitch. Yeah, and they love me. Yeah. Like, they're We have a good relationship. Viking, I'm going to kill because we're all... I, every time I do something in that game, I'm like, you've upset Viking. Yeah, like, honestly. Chill out, yeah, man. Yeah, that's how we're going to go with this. Yeah, so let us know what you think. <laughs> I'm glad that you asked. <laughs> so, uh, that was episode 101. 101.5 MGK, the latest sounds from the <laughs> 90s and tomorrow. <laughs> honestly, though... I do kind of miss the radio for all those kinds of vibes. The 80s, 90s, and now. I miss, like, you're in the middle of a car. Wait. (laughs) It's summer. You're in a car in a normal seat, and the radio's on. And it's just, like, the 80s, 90s, and today. And the first song is... And it's... Want to soak up the sun because yeah, you know, like, that. like some Cheryl Crow ass shit. Too you're not there, grocery like. shopping in the summertime unless you hear that song, fucking The Remedy by Jason Mraz, or that one Michael Bublé song where he's in a fucking grocery store I know singing. What you're talking about. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, fuck, I can't remember the name. Just of that song. haven't met you yet. Yeah, yeah. That's my Michael Bublé. In case you wanted to know, Bublé. Ruble. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for having a cup of tea with us. Yes. <laughs> cup of iced tea. And uh, benches. Stay tuned for bench time. Yes. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. All right, benches. How you doing? Hey. It's 101. 101. Yeah. I don't know. 101 Dalmatians. Oh. Oh my God. I should have done dogs or something like that. Uh, are there 101 dog breeds? Probably. People Definitely. Make some shit they up. make some weird ass names. But uh, this is what you guys are doing at Trader Joe's. Cool. Perfect. We got Nicole Dowling, who is down on the ground picking up a lost cucumber. 
Carissa is carousing around the infamous parking lot trying to find a space. Bailey Lynn is picking up coffee to go with the Baileys they just bought. Jackie Goldfarb is picking out a few gold potatoes. One of my faves. Mm -hmm. Slow Nolan is amazed that there was no line in the cashiers. Sarah Booth is getting a free sample from the sample booth. Allison Sens is just a few cents short and can't be sure what to put back. Hunter Curtis is hunting for the beans, but they can't find them. (laughs) I love hunting for beans. Um, Megan Rackley is racking up a huge bill buying so many peppermint Oreos. Kate Convery is having a conversation with the cashier about blueberries. Danielle Manis is deciding between a red or yellow onion, so you're not yelling this time. Yeah. Taylor Collins is calling their friends to see what they still need for the party. Emma Corbeal is trapped in the corner because there's too many people in the store. Heather Ann is anticipating a busy store because they're going on a Sunday. Sloan Fuller's cart couldn't be fuller. Ah, yes. Classic. Angelica Fleas is trying to track down some gelatin for a dessert they're making. Jade Agoshi is picking up some shiitake mushrooms for a stir fry. Maj Elizabeth is sad that the bath section is very lacking. Amanda Robinette is robbing a few jalapenos. Laura Collins is calling out to their family whom they've lost in the sea of shoppers. Ishbel Mendez is stocking up on bell peppers. Talia Miller is wondering how fine they should mill their coffee beans. Kat Vallejo is wishing there was a valet so they wouldn't have to get annoyed in the parking lot. Margarita is getting some limes for a margarita. Hannah Labelson is reading all the labels on everything because she's woke. (laughs) Daisy Blossom Dottie is sniffing all of the blossoming flowers. Emily Lewis is losing their mind trying to fight the large crowds. Chloe Archer is grinding their coffee beans to work in a clover machine. Anthony Hood smacked their knee on a peach stand and is swearing profusely. (laughs) Mariah Hannah is handling all of the honeydews and getting dirty looks from the other shoppers. Handle those melons. Elizabeth Hallbrook is trying to find the Swiss cheese with the fewest holes. Jennifer Habgood is following Ina's advice and trying to find the good vanilla. (laughs) A good (laughs) conquest. Um, (laughs) Madison Greer is picking out the greenest head of broccoli that they can find. Madison Wolf is wolfing down the pre-made wrap they just got. Megan McNally is trying to find omega-3 supplements in the dietary aisle. Skylar Medley is selecting a medley of root vegetables for a stew. Megan Preyas is praying that they can get through this trip without getting their toes stepped on. Corey Springfield is buying a spring salad mix. Classic cat is buying a new cardboard scratcher for their cat, which honestly we need to do. <laughs> Ilka is choosing between soy or almond milk. Josie West is getting some Western-style veggie burritos. Jax is using some grocery store hacks to get the best bargains. I love it. Nicole Allen thinks the color on the cauliflower is a little off. Courtney White wanted to get some white onions, but they all look like shit. Yo, honestly, dragging really quick every onion at Trader Joe's. Yeah, they are really not good. They're not good. Um, Scott Conant's probably, like, laughing somewhere. (laughs) Bridget Carey Davis is carrying way too many things and should have gotten a cart. Cody Castillo is wearing a cast and is having a hard time collecting all their groceries. Jennifer Cornwell is trying a sample of corn. Me. Sophia Koch is making sofritas and is getting the ingredients to make them. Ash Rozelle is looking for rose water, but doubts they'll find any. Jackie Lampo is the manager of the store, trying to find all of the keys. Beth Fonseca is fond of the ready-to-go section. Same. Me too. <laughs> Jackie Bergiulio wonders if Trader Joe's carries jackfruit. They probably do. Christina Contreras is sad that the garlic bulbs are all so teeny. Allison Dow is collecting all the ingredients for Beef Wellington. That's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dow Well, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah. Catherine Simpson is getting sugar to make a simple syrup. Allie McGregor is admiring the gorgeous display of pineapples. Me. Marley Naj just leaned on the pile of pineapples and sent them spilling all over the floor. Ian Murphy is looking at the murky juices, trying to decide which flavor they want. Murky juices. That's a great way to describe them. Don't like that. Um, Lucy Ravenscroft was lucky enough to grab the last package of soy chorizo. Cater Liriano is leering at Lucy Ravenscroft because they wanted that chorizo. That's (laughs) fucked. Rebecca O'Donnell is not a fan of the odor coming from this cantaloupe. Kendall Berg is putting down the iceberg lettuce and getting a bag of romaine. Yes. <laughs> Megan Grilly is getting some tilapia to sear on the grill. What if it was the Christmas ahi? Oh, <gasps> yes. Chloe Killip is an employee killing time by pretending to organize the shelves. Taco Roach, you know, the yeah. roaches, <laughs> is buying everything they need for the world's best taco. 
Cassandra Buckout has their buck out ready to pay for this gum. Oh my god. Haley Cadwaller is about to force themselves into a wall of ravaging customers. Camellia Malky is spoiling themselves with some malted milk balls. Maddie Pullman feels like they're on a polar ice cap because the freezer section is good. <laughs> Freezer section. The way I said that, it like I don't know what happened. <laughs> Amanda Marie is yelling at the manager because the avocados are not looking too good. Yo, that's the worst. Jane Shell is a cashier ringing the bell at their station. Those bells never know what they mean. <laughs> Allison Francois is frankly not that impressed and would rather be at Whole Foods. Caitlin Whalen is wailing because all of the orange juices are expired. Cody Robinson is a cashier trying to locate the code for apples. Lauren Siobhan is shivering in the freezer section also. Sarah Seaman is choosing between fresh or frozen seafood. Dana Daly goes to Trader Joe's daily with some fresh vegetables. Megan Wilson doesn't have the willpower to resist the cookie butter. Claire Wood is enjoying the wooden accents in the store. Kelly Adams is the cashier adding up how many potatoes Jackie Goldfarb bought. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hannah Peterson is trading in their Peter Pan peanut butter, whoa, for <laughs> some all-natural peanut butter. Anna Hernandez is throwing so many animal crackers into their cart. Jenna Gordonier is analyzing the selection of gourds. Sasha Smith is smiling because they just got a great deal on corn. Sarah is staring at a massive amount of people and contemplating if they really need to go in. Me every time. Lynn and Drew are trying to remember what they needed but are drawing a blank. Bridget Dubin is trying to find a trash bin but there doesn't seem to be any. Hillary Gay is sad they don't carry any Hillshire Farms. Go, go meat. meat. <laughs> um, also, think about how we were conditioned to say go meat. Yeah. You know right? what I'm saying? Like, no. that's fucked. The industry. They're happening. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we woke up Lila. Um, Elizabeth Doles is trying to get some Trader Joe's version of Dole pineapple chunks. Mackenzie Knight is shopping at night to avoid the long lines. And Rachel Evans is eventually going to realize... They're not even at a grocery store. <laughs> Come on, Rachel. We don't know where she is, but uh, we'll find her. We never know where Rachel is. <laughs> um, so, yeah. What are the rest of the Beach Bunch is doing? Oh, what are they doing? They... I would say they're at, like, the dried food area where you can get, like, cereal and beans and all that kind of stuff. And they're trying to figure out, like... Are these have they been changed ever? Yeah, you know how old is this? Yeah, bean? I get you. So we got Alice and Teresa, Allie Malone, Kathleen Wynn, and Rose Barnett. So thanks, guys, yes. for having this tea and Supporting talking the show. tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spilling the tea. <laughs> I'm really not a teen. Oh my god. What? <laughs> I just keep like banging everything right now. Honestly. All right, we should probably go. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>